Hello and welcome to this comprehensive guide on Angular 17 standalone components. In this tutorial, we will dive deep into the world of standalone components, exploring their benefits, setup and best practices. Whether you are new to Angular or an experienced developer looking to streamline your workflow, this guide will provide you with the knowledge and tools to effectively utilize standalone components in your Angular 17 projects. Before we jump into the practical implementation, let's define standalone components and understand their role in Angular 17. Standalone components are a new feature introduced in Angular that aims to simplify the development process by reducing the reliance on ng modules. With standalone components, you can create self-contained reusable components without the need to declare them in ng module. The main advantage of standalone components is that they encapsulate their own dependencies, making them more modular and easier to manage. This means you can import and use standalone components directly in other components or modules without the overhead of ng module declarations. So this is the quick example of a standalone component. This is how it will look like. We have the property standalone is equal to true. And that's it. Once you set this property and value, then your component would become a standalone component. Now that we have basic understanding of standalone components, let's move on to setting up our development environment. To get started with Angular 17 and standalone component, you will need to ensure you have these prerequisites. First, Node.js, that should be later than 14, and Angular CLI with the version 17 or later. First, make sure you have Node.js installed on your machine. You can download it from official website, nodejs.org. Next, install the Angular CLI globally by running the command in your terminal. So as you can see, this is the command. If you run in your terminal, then your Angular CLI would be installed globally. Once installation is completed, you are ready to create a new Angular 17 project. So in order to create a new Angular CLI project, we will run this command ng install and your project you run the command ng new and your project name okay so you can give any name to your project once project is installed navigate to your project directory by using the cd command with the development environment setup let's dive into creating our first standalone component to create a standalone component we will use the angular cli so for that run this command ng generate component type ng generate component and the name of the component hello standalone okay by default angular automatically generates the standalone components so in case if it doesn't then you can simply add stand alone in this way normally you will not have to mention it okay just press enter and this will generate the standalone component for you and you will notice that this folder has been generated. So this command generated this new component named hello standalone component with a standalone flag set to true. Now let's now let's examine the generated files. We have the hello-standalone.component.ts file. So here as you can see the component is decorated with the component and has standalone property set to true. For the template, we have the template URL that is pointing towards the HTML file that we have generated here. To use this standalone component in another component or module, you can simply import it. So let me show you. Let's go to the app component. And here in the imports array, I will add hello standalone component. Now this component is available to use. So this is the app that is currently running in my browser. And now let's go to the HTML of app component and I'm going to get rid of all of the generated code. And here I will add h1 tag, hello world. And now below that I will add my standalone component, save it. You can see that standalone component has been added and being displayed on the browser. You notice that we imported the hello standalone component directly in the app component and added it to the imports array. There is no need to declare it in the ng module so standalone components use the same component decorator as regular components but with a few additional properties first one is standalone true 
that marks the component as standalone then we have the selector specifies the selector used to identify the component in templates then we have the template url that references to the html file then we have the style url that connects our ts file with the components scss file then we have the imports array so this specifies the dependencies like components directives pipes used by this component then we can also have the providers array as well like this so this specifies the services provided by the component you can also use other decorators like input output host binding to define input properties output events and host binding respectively to inject a service into a standalone component you can simply add the import statement for that service to import it in, in your component and then you can inject the service into the components constructor or you can use the inject function directly so let me show you for that i will have to create a quick service so let's open the terminal and here i will type ng generate service test press enter okay the service has been generated you can see now in order to use it in here i will create a component property test service is equal to inject and make sure to import the inject function from the angular slash core and within that i will pass the test service so in this way it will be available to use angular 17 introduces new routing feature that works seamlessly with standalone components <clears throat> you can set up routing for standalone components using the route interface and the provide router function so as you can see here we are using the provide router function and this is being used in the app.config file and app.config file is being used in the main.ts file in this way okay and we are taking the routes array from the app.routes that is currently empty so first let's define our routes here let's say i want to add a route for that i will add path and here i will add test and for the component i will directly specify the test component for the component i will type hello standalone component in this way now let's quickly test it here i will specify slash test press enter uh, it will not work because we did not add the router outlet that's why it is not working for that go to the app.component.html and get rid of this here we will add router outlet save it and now if you reload it this is working on this page that, other than that you can also lazy load standalone components using the load component function so let me show you what i am talking about so go to the app.routes and here instead of adding the component property i will add the standalone component in this way and then we will add then function here that will take the callback function so we got the module from the parameter we will use that module to access the standalone component and return it now but now this is being loaded lazily standalone components can interact with other components and directive just like a regular component you can use input and output properties to communicate between components to use a standalone component within another component's template import it and add it to the imports array in the same way like we did in the app dot component here you can see we have imported the standalone component in the imports array and then we have used in the app dot component dot html earlier so let me quickly create a child component here just to demonstrate you that how you can use the input and output so for that i will use the command ng generate component child press enter this would create a new folder in our project with that name child okay now let's import it in the by the way we don't need this anymore because we are now loading with lazily so this component don't we don't need to import this component here but now i need to import the child component in this way and here in the app component i will add the app child component in this way 
now child component content is being displayed and now let's go to the child component and <clears throat> let's define our input and output properties here for that we will add the decorator input from angular core <clears throat> and give it a name input data string and default value would be empty for the output we will do the same we will import the output from the angular core and give it a name output event and assign it new event emitter and make sure to import the event emitter from the angular core now let's go to the html file of this component here i will add the input data okay and now in the ts file i will define my function that will emit the event by using the output event so let's define emit event function within that i will add this dot output event and events emit something in it from it now let's go to the html file and here i will add a button here i will add the click event on that button now let's go to the app.component.ts uh, in the app.component.html here and here we will add pass the inputs like input data and we will listen to the <coughs> event emitter event and we will call a function in our ts file that we will define shortly on data emit or event emit and let's define this function in our ts file and here i will alert that message okay let's receive the event and we will display that event content here okay and let's pass the event okay now you can see the input data is being shown we just passed it from the parent and if you click on the button it should show the alert if everything is fine so in our case the alert is not being shown so let's see the inspect element to see if there is any error so we added incorrect event listener here the correct name was output event now it should work let's close this and click on that and you can see the alert message is being shown when working with standalone components consider the best practices and tips like keep standalone component focused and reusable next use meaningful and descriptive names for your components leverage dependency injection for loose coupling and testability leverage dependency injection for loose coupling and testability organize your components into logical folders and modules optimize performance by lazy loading standalone components when appropriate and follow angular style guide and coding conventions for consistency all right congratulations you have now learned the fundamentals of standalone components in angular 17 in this comprehensive guide we covered the benefits of standalone components how to create them dependency injection routing interaction with other components and directives and best practices standalone components offer a more modular and streamlined approach to building angular applications reducing the resilience on ng module and promoting code reusability remember to experiment with standalone components in your own projects and leverage their capabilities to create clean maintainable and scalable ang scalable angular applications i hope that this video was useful for you if you think that this video provided value to you then please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and click on the bell icon and also please like and share this video if you have any questions or feedback or suggestions, then please leave them in the comment section and I will do my best to reply them as soon as possible. Thanks for joining me in this tutorial. See you later in the next video. Goodbye.